This 2023 ASCO Annual Meeting Plenary Video Interview is supported in part by Folsom Pharma USA. It is an honor to be at ASCO to be part of the community that has radically advanced care for the patients who inspire us daily. Folsom is a patient-centered, global, innovative pharmaceutical company. We're committed to delivering world-class science to advance the care of cancer patients around the world. Grade 2 gliomas are often referred to as low-grade gliomas, but this really is a misnomer as these tumors are malignant, gradually infiltrate the normal brain, and cause significant morbidity and premature death. And patients with low-grade gliomas are young, typically in their fourth decade of life at diagnosis. They are otherwise healthy and they're striving to maintain a normal life, remain active, work, raise families. And it is very important to address the needs of these patients. The current therapies for low-grade glioma include surgery, radiation, and chemotherapy, but do not cure this disease and are associated with considerable toxicity including radiation-associated neurocognitive changes, chemotherapy-associated uh, changes in DNA, hypermutation possibly, and other toxicities. So these patients face significant disease and treatment-related morbidities and face that difficult decision um, when to accept these treatments for their tumor. The majority of low-grade gliomas harbor these mutations in the metabolic genes, IDH, and this really provides an enormous opportunity to intervene early and change the trajectory of this disease. And the Indigo Phase three trial showed that targeting the IDH mutation in grade two glioma with an oral small molecule like boracidinib significantly delays the growth of these tumors and the need for more toxic therapies. So it really is an important step toward less toxic, more precise cancer therapy for these young patients. It is generally believed that molecularly targeted agents have the greatest chance to succeed when used early in the disease course. That means before the cancer develops additional mutations and builds a complete network of signaling networks and cancer cell communities. The Indigo study focused on patients who were in the watch and wait period prior to initiation of radiation and chemotherapy. This window in the disease allowed us to conduct a single agent placebo control trial and identify a very clear signal of drug activity. That is a very different design from most current trials in glioma, which focus on the recurrent disease setting or combination with established therapies. From a larger perspective, the Indigo trial opens an entire new space of drug development um, in low-grade glioma Pharmaceutical companies have historically stayed away from low-grade glioma as it was felt that there is not a clear drug target and it would take too long to develop a drug in this uh, disease. And the Indigo trial has um, suggested and shown that that actually can be done um, successfully and hopefully will motivate more efforts in, in this disease for patients who suffer from it. The Indigo study represents the culmination of a focused drug development effort that has been going on for many years and may provide a blueprint 
for future precision medicine approaches in neuro-oncology. An important decision before embarking on the phase three trial was the decision by the sponsor to conduct a perioperative trial to make sure that vorocitinib does get to the tumor cell, inhibits the mutant enzyme, and induces molecular and cellular changes which would be expected to occur with effective target inhibition. This was particularly critical as the Indigo trial aimed to target a non-enhancing tumor population, and these tumors are behind the blood-brain barrier. So this perioperative study did indeed show that vorocitinib at the same dose that was subsequently used in the Indigo trial reduced the concentration of the critical metabolite by over 90% in the tumor tissue. Other very important aspects of the INDIGO trial include the rigorous imaging assessment with a blinded imaging review committee and a standardized imaging protocol, as well as the global effort, which included uh, over 77 centers in 10 countries and really allowed for a broad representation of different regions as well as accrual at a, a good pace. And lastly, it was very important to involve patients in the planning of the trial and conduct roundtables to really determine what their needs are and how we could best serve them with the outcome of the Indigo trial. So a lot of thought went to, into the planning, as you can see, of the Indigo trial, and we're very gratified that uh, it paid off. <laughs>